previously in the Alien franchise. They're aliens! And Ripley made it home. What did you think about Aliens, the second movie? <laughs> special edition. Uh, so the special edition, I give it an 8 out of 10 because I think it drags a little bit. If For the theatrical cut, I give it a 9 out of 10 because it's a bit tighter with the pacing, moves along a bit faster. I really like all the additions that the director cut ha- director's cut has, like the guns and some of the scenes. It makes sense. But overall, as a package, the theatrical feels better. Uh, but overall, the Alien movie, Aliens movie, uh, is super fun. Classic moments with the Space Marines and the Aliens and the Queen and Ripley and Newt. Just a bunch of classic moments. Love it. I'm along for the ride for the whole movie. Um, it's a great counterpoint to Alien and an expansion of the universe where Alien is more of this horror movie stuck on a ship. Aliens is more of an action military sci-fi movie. It's kind of a good counterpoint. It kind of feels great. Uh, there's great growth by the characters, especially Ripley, and you can see her journey from being like fourth officer or whatever she was on the on the um, Nostromo to now being this badass rescuing Newt from the fusion reactor. So great story, great action, classic tech, great one-liners, design, all of it great. So I give it an 8 out of 10 for special edition and 9 out of 10 for theatrical. What do you think? I also gave it 8 out of 10. The special edition of Aliens 2 is an excellent movie. It's 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 so compelling. It's like the first movie, Alien, you have this horror survival. You just got to make it out and you barely scrape by by the skin of your teeth. The second movie, we're pissed off. We're going to go back and we're going to F them up. We're going to go back and, and, and save our colonists. To that point, the science fiction, fantastic. We have a colony coming up. We have terraforming. We have androids and robot mechs. Like the sci-fi is, is, is just spot on. And the story is so compelling. Like there you have this kid that you have to save. The android has to do a better job than the previous android, which is evil. And Ripley just grows and grows. Not only is she a badass and able to fight her way out, but she's able to grow her team and build and support all the people around her. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Um, additionally, you have all these like cues and notes, these these homages, I guess, later on other science fictions give homages to this film, the, like the sounds and the and the phrases that they say and, and the scenery. Additionally, this military sci fi, we, we shift from 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 trying to just escape from the alien to like, let's gear up, let's go, let's get them out. And, and, and the military, it, it's fantastic. Military sci-fi, it's, it's one of my favorite genres. Additionally, the more we learn about xenomorphs, the more there is. So so before we just have one alien, and then now we have an alien and a queen, and there's the hive structure and their communication. We learn more about them as an entire species, and it just, it just draws you in for more and more and more. Excellent movie, 8 out of 10. I love it. Should we talk about the movie? Let's do it. Let's do it. So at the beginning of the movie... Uh, what is it? Ripley is picked up by some salvagers 60 years about after the alien incident. Um, and so they have an inquest because she blew up the whole ship. They, they, she actually flew through the core systems. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's such a small target that nobody noticed her. Fantastic mm-hmm. science fiction. Yeah. Now you freely admit to detonating the engines of and thereby destroying an M-class star freighter. 42 million in adjusted dollars. That's minus payload, of course. Per- minus payload, of course. Okay. <laughs> it's just a little, okay, little, beam counter. <laughs> little dig. <laughs> Reasons unknown, and the Stromo set down on LV-426, and that it resumed its course and was subsequently set for self-destruct by you for reasons unknown. I mean, she's in the room. Ask her. Yeah. It's reasons unknown. She's telling you. We sat down there on company orders. The analysis team found no physical evidence of the creature you described. Good. I blew it out of the goddamn airlock. Are there mm. any species like this hostile organism on LV-426? No. It's a rock. No indigenous life. Ma'am, I already said that it was not indigenous. It was an alien ship. It was not from there. It's like the inquest people are not listening. She says something and they're like, I don't care. I mean, definitely that lady was just ready to do smoke tricks. <laughs> she was not inhaling. <laughs> so the smoke was in her mouth and then somebody asked her a question. She's like, oh, ooh, I answer you now. Yeah. No indigenous life. She wasn't paying attention. <laughs> That's right was a derelict spacecraft. A creature that gestates inside a living human host yes. and has concentrated acid for blood. That's right. And all this, this bullshit that you think is so important, one of those things gets down here, you can just kiss all that goodbye. It is the finding of this court of... An- I mean, it does feel unbelievable from the inquest board's perspective 
But at the same time, why why would she lie? That's right. And, and humans are out in space. Is is the probability of there being aliens that are dangerous zero? Like the more we're out in space, the more likely we're going to find some. Right. right. And if she's going to cover her ass for blowing up the whole ship, she could come up with a better cover story than like <laughs> aliens with acid for blood who right. gestate in hosts. Like she's an intelligent woman. Like she can make up like a good answer, like a, like a, believe, right. a more believable answer than this. That's right. Inquiry that Warrant Officer E. Ripley has acted with questionable judgment and is unfit to hold an ICC license as a commercial flight officer. So in this universe, um, the ICC is some government organization, but you get the feeling that Weyland Yutani is like way more powerful than the ICC. So it's probably Weyland Yutani using the ICC to blackball her. Oh. Instead of the ICC coming in with real, like, oh, she's really cognitively impaired. I don't think so. Said license is hereby suspended indefinitely. Now, no criminal charges will be filed against you at this time, and you are released on your own recognizance for a six-month period of psychometric probation to include monthly review by an ICC psychiatric technician. These proceedings are closed. 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 <laughs> so, it kind of feels like the inquest was... Felt official, but not really official. Hmm. And hmm. Waylon Utani is doing some Waylon Utani stuff, and whatever outcome they want, they got. It felt to me like a sham because the head guy just declares it closed. He does actually. He doesn't actually like make eye contact with anyone else. He's just like closed. Are you freely? That's right. At the end, they don't dismiss Ripley from the room to and discuss, then, and then discuss amongst right. themselves what outcome to have. He, this guy's just like, oh, I already decided. And this is what we're doing. None of these people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, what? what? There's no, not, not even like thumbs up, thumbs down. It's just, right. he knew the answer already. Right. And all, yeah, I guess they're all like, well, Waylon Yutani said this was the outcome. So I'll do my part with the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, then, and then we're done. Because nobody objected to this guy declaring the inquest's results without discussion. Crazy. They get the program. They get it. Well, here's some stills from well, Hadley's Hope is the name of the settlement on LB-426. And I just like this, the uh, Wayland yutani Corporation symbol. Very cool. The W and the Y. And then, of course, the big wheel. The big wheel! <laughs> With a little... It's a Wayland yutani big wheel. Okay. <laughs> they manufacture everything. Gotta get that advertising in. Yep. All right, so the colony is contact with the colony on LV-426 is lost because Burke told them to go look for the aliens, which we learn later, um, which causes the colony to go to shit. And so even though Ripley has been banned from flight, Burke goes around, does a back end, and, and pulls her in. Let's listen to his pitch. They've lost contact with the colony on LV-426. I don't believe this. You guys throw me at the wolves, and now you want me to go back out there? Forget it. It's not my problem. Sid, these colonial marines are very tough hombres. There's nothing they can't handle. We've been trained to deal with situations like this. Then you don't need me. I'm not a soldier. Yeah, but we don't know exactly what's going on out there. I would like you there as an advisor, and that's all. Why are you going? The corporation co-financed that colony along with colonial administration. We're getting into a lot of terraforming now, and building better worlds. Yeah, yeah, I saw the commercial. So I see he's he's lying there. He wants to go there to get a payday. How do you figure he's lying? Well, I, I always figured he was lying because he starts doing this tick over here with oh. the cloth. So he's a little uncomfortable, so he does some kind of tick. Some type of like soothing distraction. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he's like, I'm going because the company has a vested interest in this thing, in the terraforming, you know, machine working. But really he wants to go there to get a payday because he wants the you know, the alien sample that he can sell, I guess, to the mm. company. Mm. So he shows this by, I guess it's a tick. Is that mm. the right word? We're getting into a lot of terraforming now and building better worlds. Yeah, yeah, I saw mm. the commercial. I think it's great that you're keeping busy. What would you say if I told you I could get you reinstated as a flight officer? The company has already agreed to pick up your contract. If I go. Yeah, if you go. So <laughs> the company blackballs her and makes her have only one option for work. And then they can rescind the uh i don't know the blackballing 
and reinstate her as a flight officer for certain favors, in which case Burke has the power to do this. It's crazy. It's so much corruption. So they, they create the leverage that they need for her. Mm-hmm. Incredible. And they, they present it as if it's the ICC doing the licensing, but really it's just Waylon Yutani pulling strings through. In fact, it may just be Burke because he's high enough up, high right. enough up in the bureaucracy to be able to have that power. Come on, that's a second chance, kiddo. Get back on the horse. Spare me, Burke. I've had my psych evaluation this month. I've read it. You wake up every night, your sheets are soaking with sweat. I said no! Wait a minute. How the fuck does he read her psyche eval? That's right. He's middle management. What the fuck? Waylon Yutani has access to anything they want. A- anything they want, yeah. That should be confidential, private, whatever the term is. HIPAA protected. Yeah. And just... And then even if it is readable by somebody outside, it shouldn't be readable to some middle management bureaucrat in Wayland yutani It's crazy. And I mean it. I am not going back. And I am, I would not be any good to you if I did. Okay. Just think about it. Don't touch me. Oh. Love that. Let's watch that one more time. Tap. Anytime you give somebody a business card... Give him a tap. give it a little tap. Mm-hmm. I never understood what this meant. Let's watch. Damn, the uh, floor is freezing. What do you want me to do? Fetch his slippers for you? Gee, would you, sir? Look into my eye. So what does that mean? What does what does look into my eye mean? Uh, I thought it was a Sauron thing. I mean, <laughs> what is he saying? He's Sauron. Yeah, no, look into my <laughs> eye. My magic takes over you. Go get into formation. <laughs> Right. The floor is cold, therefore I'm Sauron. Yep. Yep. Make, makes sense to me. Is it some type of like like tell look at me straight in the eye and not be goofing around, something like that? Maybe. I don't know. Look look me in the eye and tell me the truth. But he was telling the truth. Force cold. Yeah, he feels cold. He feels cold. Hmm. So maybe just look in my eye. stop bitching. There it is. I like that. I mean <laughs> That's Mom, not... I got a, I got a C on my exam. Look into my eye. <laughs> oh. <I'm>, okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, Marines messing around. They're a little bit overconfident. They don't know what they're getting into. Hey, Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? Got him. It is too bad. Slap. There's some juicy colonist daughters we have to rescue from their virginity. Dumbass colonists. Hey. Well, what this crap supposed to be? Hey, you sure wouldn't mind getting some more of that Arcturian poon tape? The one that you had was male. What's the matter with this Arcturian? <laughs> hey, what are you doing, man? So are these Marines just, they go on a mission to various planets and systems and colonies and stuff, and they just start hooking up with people. And, I mean, I guess there's no aliens as far as they know. So it's like civil disturbances, maybe like police actions. They're not really doing much. Hmm. So we're just having a good time, really. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Come on, quit messing around, Drake. Come on. Come on. Do it, Bishop. Hey. Enjoy your meal. That wasn't funny, man. <laughs> funny for Mike. First, funny from here where I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want that to happen to me. But, you know, if it's an, if it's an android, they're probably... Not gonna mess I mean, up. He cuts himself a little. Oh, he does. That's true. So he did screw up. So we zoom out of the ship and we get a flyby and it's a cool looking ship. Let's see what it looks like. So it looks really practical to me. It looks cool. They've got these like antenna thingies yeah. out front. And it's like a long streamline, basically like a rifle in space. Right. The Sulaco. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Is that the engine? I think so. Let's see, get a better angle here. So we've got all this like antenna array, forward facing maybe. Sure. Um, pretty cool. What are, what are these things? Those might side. be forward-facing guns. Okay, so they can't really swivel. We just align the ship. Right. And then... So, so like, the simplest shape is a sphere. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, not simple design, but just in terms of, like, there's no preferred direction. 
here in this ship, it's definitely like like shaped like a ruler. There's definitely like a forward direction. Mm -hmm. And so I thought like, is this a good design? So so you get if like if you're facing an enemy, you present to them the smallest cross section. Like mm -hmm. to them, it's like looking at a ruler mm -hmm. instead of looking at it sideways. They're looking at a ruler head on. And so then it's hard for the enemy to see you, but then you have all this machinery in the back to mm -hmm. power up your guns. Mm, and then I guess if you're engaging two different enemies, you could show them like the front face, which is the skinniest. Mm -hmm. And then a second enemy out here, you show them the the side of your face, which is also skinny. Mm, yeah, interesting. Cool shape. I guess there's also considerations if you have a single gun, well, that's directional. And if you have a single engine, that's also directional. If it was a sphere or something else, you'd have to have guns and engines in all directions. Maybe that's impractical. Maybe. It looks lethal as heck. It does, yeah. I think it's just drifting right now. This, I think this would be the engine. Mm -hmm. It would be on here. But it's just drifting into orbit. It's a really cool design. And I think we've seen this in like the Halo franchise. And I've seen alien inspired stuff like this in Mass Effect, I think, in different places. This like flying gun look. It's pretty yeah. cool. So I think the Sulaco is going to have a safety incident coming up. Let's take a look. I don't care if you are short, Hudson, get it done. I want this loading lock sealed. How many more you got, Spunkmeyer? That's one. <laughs> So very, very cool. Super cool. So I noticed right here. So this machine will fuck you up. Mm -hmm. If so, we've got a human without, you know, completely hard hats. without hard hats, without armor, without anything. No high vis vest. That's right. Just walking right by. If he accidentally swings something and hits her in the head, she could actually die. At least concussion. Right. And she's walking at an angle where they're not, where the operator's not going to see him coming. Right. So there doesn't seem to be like a region around this, the, this machine. Safety bubble. Yeah, safety bubble. Now I know the military they have very busy decks, but they gotta have safety. There's going to be an incident. We see it again. Look at this. This, he's he's actually in motion swinging these things while these people are walking by in the opposite direction. How can, how can the operator of this machine have any awareness? You he doesn't have rear view mirrors. You can't see. Yep. So it's almost like if this thing is in operation, I'm moving, clear the clear the area and they should tape it off and declare, like don't go into the zone if you're walking. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have a safety incident. And now that I'm looking at it, They've also got snag hazards. Look at this. Oh, yeah. This guy lifts his foot one inch instead of one and a half. Mm -hmm. The whole machine is going down. Right. And he could yank. He could yank cabling. Mm. He, he could. It could be a mess. So very cool. But there's going to be a safety incident. Somebody's got paperwork to do. Oof. Not worth it. Mm -hmm. The paperwork's not worth it. Not worth it. The person who cares. Hmm. The, probably the person that has to do the paperwork is the high strung sergeant. Let's watch him. Why is he shouting so much? I always thought that he was getting them hyped up for the battle. Hyped up for the battle, but then he tells them to calm down and sit in the ship. Yeah, why not get them hyped up? Like, as you're about to drop. As you're about to drop? I, are they con too confined to get hyped? <laughs> I don't, I don't. It, would, it would overpressure the ship. <laughs> it would burst the atmosphere. <laughs> Yelling at people while they're getting ready is a good way for them to forget something. That's true. So when do you get hyped? I mean, if they need to get hyped for battle, they need to get into the drop ship, which is a confined space where you have to sit down. What, do you get hyped while you're sitting? I, I guess. I don't, I, know. I don't know. I've never dropped into an alien planet. I don't know. Okay. And so this spurs some, some command confidence in the lieutenant. Let's watch it. We're in the pipe. Five by five. Rough air ahead. We're in for some chop. 
How many drops is this for you, Lieutenant? How many combat drops? Two. Shit. <laughs> oh, man. That would have been a good time to be hyping him up. Because then the people can't listen to this conversation of he, the lieutenant does has, has very little experience. But isn't the um, the sergeant is stuck in his seat? Yell, yell from there. Or maybe he like cables into like one of the, like a safety rail, mm -hmm. and then he can walk up and down and yell at people, and get him ramped up as they're dropping. Hmm. Okay. Instead of talking to the lieutenant. Hmm. So this is just a classic uh, line. They have sharp sticks as well as guns. Hey, Rip, don't worry. Me and my squad of ultimate badasses will protect you. Check it out. Independently targeting particle beam failings. Wow. Probably half the city with this puppy. We got tactical smart missiles, base plasma pulse rifles, RPGs, sonic electronic ball breakers. <laughs> Nukes, knives, sharp sticks. Knock it off, Hudson. Hudson's always causing problems. Mm. Listen to all the hardware. Yeah, and what's he doing wandering around the cabin while we're in, while they're in flight? That's right. They're like dropping in right now. Yeah, sergeant needs to put him back in his seat. All right, this is the terraforming station. It has very cool vibe to it. In fact, it's mm -hmm. um, this vibe that other franchises later on touch into. You mm -hmm. got this like central pillar with these kind of shield wally things with mm -hmm. like the like, like wolf ears. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And um, this seemed fairly familiar. Like, yeah, yeah. Large base, wide footprint, and bam! This is Halo 3. This is Halo 3. There's a portal in Halo 3. In one of the levels. And yeah, so it definitely has the look mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the terraforming machine in Aliens. There's a central part. Well, I guess there's no structure here. With these cool leaves. I don't know what to call them. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, definitely Aliens-inspired. Mm. Very cool. So when the dropship gets down, the sergeant orders them out, and they do their tactics, but it feels very sketch, very suspicious. Ten seconds, people. Look sharp. We want a nice, clean dispersal this time. Let's go. Move it out. Head them up. Vasquez, take point. So they stop there, mm -hmm. and like they're just the two heavy gunners are just exposed, just standing out in the Move open. Up. Second squad online. Okay, I like this leapfrog. But then again, like the sergeant and Vasquez just standing out in the open. It felt strange to me. I felt like mm -hmm. if you're entering a, a unknown safety area, then you like stand behind stuff, stand off to the sides, and shoot in. Yeah. Very strange. Um, very, just very confident tactics. Right, because if somebody was actually in this base here, as the door is opening, I have a clear place to shoot. That's right. And the and Vasquez is just totally exposed here. Vasquez will have to like look around the room in the dark and try to see what's out there, whereas mm -hmm. somebody in the inside defending the door just shoots at whatever's open. That's right. Just whatever's there. Also, so backing up a little bit, the... The heavy person, Vasquez, goes in first th through the gap. That's right. Isn't that weird? Let's move! That's weird. So she goes first. She's not even really clearing. Right. Which makes sense. She can't really clear because her gun is so big. So large and heavy, you can't twist well. Right. Seems strange. Yeah, seems strange. Also, back here, we got heavy guy, no helmet. Mm -hmm. Heavy guy, no helmet. The only two looking? That's weird. Weird. And then at the beginning, the first person out of the APC is Heavy Vasquez. Oh, move it out! Head him up! That's wrong. The sergeant is the first one out. Uh, Gun, uh, not was, rat the ready. I don't know who goes out on the left side. Oh, move I, it out! I don't think we know. They, they run off somewhere. I don't, I don't oh, know. That's, is, I thought, is that not the sergeant? I think the sergeant is right behind her. So this is the sergeant. Yeah, so yeah, who's yeah. this? I have no yeah, idea. We don't know. His this gun's not at the ready. They're just running. Right. Vasquez's gun at the ready, but it's so big, it's hard for her to do the job. It just felt like somebody out front should be nimble. Mm -hmm. Then you then you have it followed up by the heavy gun. Then you have the sergeant. Then you have a long range person. It felt like a kind of disorganized, low strategic value run up. Right? Maybe they weren't expecting any enemies. So they're not taking it seriously. 
That does seem to be some discipline problems in this group. That definitely does seem to be some discipline problems. There's no way that standard equipment doesn't include a helmet for Heavy Gunner. Right, right, right. Unless in the character loadout screen, you forgot to equip it. Or it doesn't look good, so you just, I, I want the cowboy hat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, very interesting tactics. Hmm, curious. Ah, and then inside, as we're going through this somewhat derelict station, they need their personal lamps so they can see where they're going. But the personal lamps are shoulder mounted. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's not like gun mounted. I would understand that too, because then wherever you're pointing is eliminated. It's it's not headlamp. It's it's just all on your shoulder. So if you see something in the dark and you you need to like look to it, you need to turn your whole torso. Um, there's there's no way to get light up on the ceiling other than like laying down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, seems uh, strange equipment. And you can see it here. This is a shoulder mounted light pointing at the locker. Thank you, not helping. Right. And uh, what's this guy's name? He's yeah. looking up and to his right, but the they're not the same vector. Right. And so. his his eyes aren't straight forward with his head. His head's mm -hmm. looking straight for his perspective, but his eyes are off to the side. That's right. So the lo the light on his shoulder is lined up to neither the gun or his head or his eyes. That's right. And it has has an effect. His name's Drake. Drake. Has an effect on the lieutenant's combat awareness. Right. Um, because the light is probably pointing up here somewhere. That's, that's the light, yeah. So it's also not lined up with the camera. Right. There's all kinds of problems with these shoulder-mounted lights. Kind of weird that it's not weird. a headlamp. Maybe they need one attached to the camera and, the, and a headlamp. It's weird. You can really see it here. This light, it's kind of blurry, but this light is pointing this way at the wall. Whereas Vasquez is looking forward. That's right. And I guess this light is never going to point where she's shooting because her torso is always to the side. That's right. Especially in these close quarters, they're kind of squirming around a lot. Yeah. So the light is swinging around, not looking where you want. Because look at all this uh, damage. It's going to mm. be a problem maneuvering. Mm. Never noticed that before. That's a good point. And a follow on to this is the unwieldy weapons. They've got these huge covering fire weapons i don't know what they call them Machine guns, heavy sure, guns sure. heavy guns sure and they're in close quarters let's see how weird it looks so how big is that three feet long sure yeah maybe three feet long and they're gonna bust into like an apartment it's just it's unwieldy Damn. No! Uh, sir, uh, we have a negative situation here. Uh, we're moving on. If there was something dangerous, Vasquez has no, has no chance. Right. So like, there's no way that she could have turned around mm -hmm. to point her, her gun at right. someone. In fact, she comes in, she enters the room, and cannot turn the gun. So she points in. She points her gun towards the corner that she was already looking. Right. Instead of towards the corner where there, towards the camera where there might have been something dangerous. Might have been something dangerous. She just can't do it because the gun is just too unwieldy. Which is okay. I just thought that she would like sling it to her back and pull out her handgun or something. Yeah. It was close quarter stuff. Right. So the it looks like the Marines aren't quite prepared for this close quarters, you know, going through the base scanning thing. They've kind of got the wrong equipment. Mm-hmm. And the wrong equipment. Here's here's the here's Burke and and Ripley and the lieutenant, and none of them have armor. Get them helmets. Right. Yeah, I mean, you, when you see those press guys in like a war zone in the real world, right. they have like a flak jacket on with a helmet, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe probably has some leg stuff. Yeah. Um, just so the soldiers don't have to worry about them so much, and they're just protected against incidents that you don't see coming. Yeah, like yeah, there may be shrapnel or something. Maybe not people. There may not be people directly targeting them, mm -hmm. but like fragments get thrown around the the, the uh, battlefield, or even heck, they just like trip and hit their head, like put a helmet on. Right. So it's weird. They're completely in civilian clothes. Mm -hmm. Weird. Very weird. PDTs. Let's let's listen. Just tell me what you're scanning for, Private. PDTs. Personal data transmitters. Every colonist had one surgically implanted. They're within 20 clicks. We'll read it out here. So far, Zippo. So it's an interesting technology that the PDTs implanted into the colonists are capable of sending out a signal that they could detect here, but it won't ping the server 
and say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, here's my coordinates. I see. Um, they have to go actively search for them at the console. It's kind of kind of weird tech. Yeah. Just add the additional little programming of saying, like, every five minutes, give a little pulse. Right. Especially if somebody's in distress. That's you right. want to know where they are immediately. So the fact that it doesn't have the, the ping technology is really interesting. So the APC has a very weird design. Let's look at this very specialized gun retraction. So, so this gun retracts. And it seems like, what is the use case for this gun retracting? That's right. Why not just leave it on top all the time? Well, if you leave it on top all the time, it's not going to clear this door. Mm -hmm. But how often do you go in get up to a door where it's just the right height? Because if mm -hmm. the door was super tall, not a problem. If it's super low, like now your entire vehicle is having a right. problem. So there's like this narrow window of exactly mm -hmm. the right, like we need to design this to roll down the back. Mm -hmm. So I wonder <laughs> if this is the standard door and the APC was designed for this door. Ah, maybe. Okay, so maybe the, the APC, the armored personnel carrier, mm -hmm. is meant to just drive people around. It has a little little gun on the front, but not this big boy gun on top. And so maybe this was retrofitted or refitted mm -hmm. to have a gun on top, but then they're like, wait, this is going to run into the doors. We need to have a roll off the back solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it could be that the APC wasn't initially designed with the gun and it was added on later and the solution was... Put a gun on rails. Roll. Yeah, sure. <laughs> also, look at this clearance of this APC. Yeah, the, like, the it pretty much clearance. has to be on paved route. Like, right. Because if there's a if there's like a rock like a foot high, it could get wedged, and then the wheels have no traction. And wheels off the ground. So this is like a urban combat guess, vehicle. Sure. Combat vehicle instead of you know super high clearance where it can go over rough terrain. Mm. Even in an urban war zone where there's like rubble and stuff. <laughs> One pothole, kinda... they're done. <laughs> they're, in, they're in big trouble, yeah. Very interesting design. Super cool looking, mm. but that ground clearance is going to cause problems. Cool killers. Now in their base, the, the team is going after the aliens and they can't see them. Let's watch. Movement. Multiple signals. They're closing. Go to infrared. Look sharp. I got signals. I got readings in front and behind. I don't see shit. There's nothing back here. They're all around us, man. Maybe they don't show up on infrared at all. So they don't show up on infrared at all. Why? First, what is infrared and why wouldn't they show up? So infrared is what? It's the light wavelengths that are below, uh, that are longer than red, visible okay. red. So our eyes can't see them, but it's another, essentially more light that our eyes can't see. I see. It's typically associated with objects giving off black body radiation, which we call heat. So we might call it heat vision. Hmm. Um, so we're saying that the aliens are not giving off typical warm blooded black body radiation, like a cold blooded creature. Okay. Um, but they seem like they're not cold blooded. Right. So. Yeah, they move around rapidly with these fast muscular contractions as mm -hmm. if they're warm-blooded. Mm, I guess not showing up on the infrared says that they're the same temperature as the environment. I think because, so. Because like, if you were to look at a room and it's like it's room temperature, so 22 Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and then if you see a person, they'll come up as a bright spot, as, like a, as, a, as a hotter spot than the rest of the room. Um, or if something is cold, like you like look around your kitchen and then your refrigerator is open, the refrigerator will come out as darker than the rest of the room, which means that the aliens, the xenomorphs, are able to match the temperature of their bodies to the surrounding environment. That would be a cool survival mechanism if they were getting hunted by like creatures that could see through infrared and the, alien, the xenomorphs are warm blooded, they could they could maybe make their skin ambient temperature. Uh, so they like they cool down the outside to match or, or warm up the outside to match the, the ambient temperature and then they pull in the heat or make it cold on the inside. Mm -hmm. Super cool. It could be like an evolved... Oh! Did they learn that because they fight against predators and predators have heat vision? They could. It could be. It could be. That could be an evolved 
like survival mechanism as like a IR camouflage. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Oh, we're playing. <laughs> uh, uh, classic line, let's watch. Hot as hell in here. Yeah, man, but it's a dry heat. Knock it off, Hudson. Hudson always causing problems. Got these one-liners. I mean, it is true. A dry heat does feel a lot less hot than a humid heat. Um, humid heat's all muggy and nasty. And no, thank you. And I also think he's wrong. It's totally, uh, it's totally a humid heat in here. Look yeah, at this. Hot as hell in here. Yeah, man, but it's a dry heat. Knock it off, Hudson. <laughs> it's clearly it's, not a dry heat. <laughs> definitely dripping and humid. Right. Nasty. Yeah. Probably stank up in there. Mm. This was interesting. Let's watch. Lieutenant, what do those pulse rifles fire? 10 millimeter explosive tip caseless. Look where your team is. They're right under the primary heat exchangers. If they fire their weapons in there, won't they rupture the cooling oh, system? Oh, this whole station is basically a big fusion reactor. You're talking about a thermonuclear explosion and... Hey, Palm, we can't have any firing in there. I, uh, I want you to collect magazines from everybody. Flame units only. I want rifles slung and no grenades. All right, sweethearts, you heard the man. Pull him out. Come on, let's have him. Give it up, Ski. Come on, let's go. Crow, I want it now. <laughs> Give it up. I'd like to keep this handy for close encounters. So the lieutenant gives the order to collect all the ammunition and grenades because there's a problem that they could rupture the coolant tanks or coolant something. Now, he doesn't tell the soldiers on the ground why he's collecting all that stuff. He just tells them to do it. They immediately disobey uh, with their own ammunition stash and unconventional weapons. But should the lieutenant have told the soldiers why he was collecting the ammunition and grenades yeah, so I that they could it. make tactical decisions on the ground. Exactly. Exactly. I hated this. I hated this because like you need to let people know what the situation is. Otherwise, they have literally reduced situational awareness. If they know why they can't shoot there, then maybe they shoot in the plane. They just don't shoot down because it's only down is the dangerous direction. So I was very upset at the lieutenant here because like tell the people why you're doing something so that way they know what to do. Wait, wait, down is the dangerous direction? Because they said that your guys are walking over the the coolant tanks. Mm -hmm. So I suppose if you shoot up, you're not going to hit the, the coolant tanks. It's really just okay. watch out for shooting down. Okay. What if there could be pipes though, right? That come up, I guess. Ah. So great point. So if there, there are pipes that come up from the coolant tanks, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then the... Uh, mm -hmm. Two pi plane and also above you mm -hmm. is, is also dangerous. In which case, get your people out. Like, get right. your people out. Like, it's dangerous to have an engagement here. We're not going to be able to defend mm -hmm. ourselves. We're not going to be able to attack if you have to. So, get them out, record, regroup, go in from a different direction, or mm -hmm. bait things out to come to you. And um, this this seemed like a very uh, second second operation lieutenant right. thing to do. So, I think I think the I think you're right. The the option. The best option here was to say, abandon this particular yep. mission, Yep. bring them back, reassess, re-equip, get everybody flamethrowered up or whatever equipment they need and go back out. Uh, why it shouldn't have forced at this point because it's, there was a tactical aspect to the mission that mm -hmm. they hadn't taken into account. So I think this is showing that Lieutenant Gorman is inexperienced and doesn't have the essentially the balls to say, you know what, the best thing to do is to, to pull out. Now, I'm not a military person, but I, I, I can imagine there are times where you're like, I don't have time to explain it. We just get it through, get it done, get a quick mm -hmm. get, get out. But to me, in this situation, it seems like he really should have told at least the sergeant right. what's going on. So the sergeant can direct people appropriately. And right. instead of he just puts up a curtain and he's like, do what I say. Right. It's actually interesting. How often should a leader... In a time time crunch situation, you need to explain themselves to people they're giving orders to. Sometimes they need the the soldiers just need to follow orders. Sometimes the soldiers need a, um, a situ like they need an explanation. Sometimes pull them out and reassess. And I think he made the optimally wrong decision here. It is as <laughs> bad as it could have been. Yeah. So they get drawn, in, drawn into a battle. Let's watch what happens in the fight. Talk to me, Hudson. Uh, multiple signals. They're closing. 
Goat infrared, people. Look sharp. What's happening, eh, Pong? Pull your team out, Gorman. I got signals. I got readings in front and behind. There's nothing back here. They're all around us, man. Maybe they don't show up on infrared at all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Just shit. You didn't get to shoot at all. Jesus Christ. Sound off! Let's rock! <laughs> <laughs> Who's firing? God damn it! Yeah. Coming out of the goddamn She's, she's like supposed fuck. to say her own name. <laughs> the incinerators and say again. Once A-Pone goes, get it's over. Out of there. Who's shut in command? Up, shut up! God damn it! What is the pose? I just got the fuck out of here! Oh no, it's falling apart. Oh no, he's firing Dude, again. Hold on, Newt. Ripley's on it. She's a stake tired woman. Turn it around! Ah. problems. You had your chance, Gorman. Come on, let's move it! Oh, don't dump your gun. Get more ammo. Don't be hero. Oh, he's gone. Forget him. He's gone. Eat this. Juicy. I find people drive a lot less carefully when it's not their neighborhood. Wait, what? When it's not their neighborhood, people drive a lot less carefully. So, like, Ripley's like, I don't live here. She's just bumping into shit, breaking down walls. I mean, yeah, that's what's going on. That's what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm. Let's follow up with what happened after the battle. Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, What's man. It? This isn't happening. We got seven canisters of CN20. I said we roll them in there and nerve gas the whole f nest. But we don't even know if it's going to affect them. I say we. That's, that's a good point. The nerve gas may not affect them. They don't know. Hudson's like this goofball, but like he says real smart stuff. We don't yeah. know the alien anatomy. What is dangerous and toxic to our bodies may not be for them. Mm -hmm. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Hey. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on one second. This installation has a substantial dollar value attached to it. They can bill me. Bill my ass, Burke. But also, the thermonuclear radiation, will that necessarily kill the aliens? Right, it could be that if they survive the initial blast, maybe the nuclear fallout could be something they eat. That's right. We don't and know. then they get nuclear powers from that. Or maybe there's some type of like spider nearby that gets re that gets charged by the nuclear radiation, and then the aliens get bit. And now they have spider aliens, mm. super powerful, mm, dangerous, possible. Glass the whole planet. Mm. Let's uh, let's look at Hudson's composure after. Uh, well, they, after call, the, they, the they call ship. they call in the dropship, and it yeah. crashes because the xenomorphs are smart. So smart, snuck up uh, from behind. <laughs> Apparently, this explosion is what does the damage to the reactor that causes the overheating later. Oh, because all these coolant pipes are busted? Yeah. I see. Well, that's great. That's just f great, man. <laughs> now what the f are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty now, man. You finished. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Maybe we could build a fire, sing a couple of songs, huh? So I also want to point out here how composed Burke is. Hudson's a soldier trained up. Burke is a civilian, and he's actually got a level head on his shoulders. Mm, what do we do now? What are we gonna do? Maybe we could build a fire, sing a couple of songs, huh? Making he says jokes. something snarky, but he's pretty calm. Pretty calm, like, yeah. He can handle stress. Yeah, for sure. Such a bummer about that dropship. They didn't get they hit all these missiles and rockets and like, mm -hmm. they didn't get to shoot any of it. What a bummer. Yeah, but they do have some equipment left over. Four pulse rifles with about 50 rounds each. 15 of these M40 grenades. Is that the only flamethrower? 
Yeah, it's only half full, but it's functional. Good news, we got four of these robot sentries. Play and scanners intact. Mm -hmm. They really kick ass. I think they'll come in handy. And this is totally like a video game. Before the horde gets there, you got your sentry guns, you got your equipment that you salvaged from a wreck. Got to set it up before the horde gets here. Equip your defenses. Yeah, that's totally what this feels like. It's totally video game room. Love it. So, Rip, so Hudson is panicking, and Ripley, she is a leader. She understands like psychology. She she handles it beautifully. Let's watch. Why don't you put her in charge? You better just start dealing with it, Hudson, because we need you, and I'm sick of your bullshit. Now, I want you to get on a terminal and call up some kind of floor plan file. I need to see air ducts, electrical access tunnels, sub-basements, every possible way into this complex. Okay, I'm on it. Hudson, just relax. This is excellent leadership. So she sees one of the team like mentally spiraling, breaking down, losing control, and she knows it's bad for that guy and also the rest of the team to hear it. So she like disciplines him, gets him to shut up, but then also gives him a task that's complicated enough to keep him busy, but not so complicated that he can't do it and it like, gives up. She's like she dials it in so that he has a task to do and he can get his mind straight by doing it. Yes, great leadership. A great plus. leadership, yeah. Hudson makes an ant analogy to the to the queen hive, and uh, let's watch him do it. I think it's actually spot on. So who's laying these eggs? I'm not sure. It must be something we haven't seen yet. Hey, maybe it's like an ant hive. There's like one female that runs the whole show. The queen. She's badass, man. I mean, big. These things ain't ants. I know you know? that. Yeah, he knows they're not ants, but he doesn't. But she doesn't know that they're not behaving like ants. Like right. Hudson calls it like he's dead on. He's, he hits the nail with the hammer, and he's simultaneously like the dumbest and smartest character. Mm -hmm. Like this is a second time where he's like, says it, calls the shot, perfect. And it's an analogy, and Vasquez is calling him out for it not being exactly ants, and he, it's obvious that it's an analogy. So Vasquez is just trying to undercut him there. I don't know why. Come on, Vasquez, you're just angry. Hudson loses it again. They've got problems with the the fusion reactor is going to go critical. They've got all kinds of stress, and they're solving problems on the fly. Let's listen. That's it. Emergency venting. How long till it blows? Four hours, with a blast radius of 30 kilometers. We got problems. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Now it's getting short. Four more weeks and out. Now I'm gonna buy it on this rock. Four more weeks. Oh, we've got to get the other dropship from the Sulaco. I mean, there must be some way of bringing it down on remote. So Hudson is in the corner just going nuts. Losing control. And and Ripley and, and Hicks are trying to work the problem with him in the background and they've got four hours thinking about that. And they gotta figure this out. It's crazy. How? Transmitter was on the APC. It's wasted. Well, we better think of something. Think of what? We're f Shut up! What about the colony transmitters? Well, somebody's gonna have to go out there. With those things running around? You can count me out. I'll go. Good idea. <laughs> Actually, so like Hudson's doing a perfect job here. Somebody throws out an idea, he throws out a reason why it may be a problem. Somebody else now sees it as a problem and they come up with a new solution. Like he's He's panicked, but he's actually doing a great job here. Right. But he is throwing out like negativity in the sense of like they we have a problem. We have to solve it. Mm -hmm. Great that we have counterpoints, but also we need to figure, figure it out. And they eventually do come to a conclusion um, that they're going to send the robot the mm -hmm. android out mm -hmm. to go align the dish and pilot the vehicle down to the base. Yeah. Whew. So Ripley is angry at Burke. And so she makes a, a threat at him. And, but, but watch what Burke does. Look, those two specimens are worth millions to the bioweapons division, right? We can both come out of this heroes, and we will be set up for life. Do you really think you can get a dangerous organism like that past ICC quarantine? How can they impound it if they don't know about it? But they will know about it for me, just like they'll know that you were responsible for the deaths of 157 colonists. You sent them to that ship. You sent them out there and you didn't even warn them. That I didn't know. So I made a decision and it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. These people are dead, Burke! Well, I'm gonna make sure that they nail you right to the wall for this. Right to the wall. So I think this is naive by Ripley because she has figured out Burke at this point. She knows he's morally... He doesn't have a strong moral code. They, they know she knows that Burke is selfish. She knows that Burke is looking for a payday. He's playing politics, 
And what what does she do here? She makes essentially a threat to send him to jail with a violent analogy. Mm -hmm. A violent analogy being nailing him to the wall. don't think she means it literally, but it's still a violent analogy. I think she's running on morals, which I think is right. I mean, she's Mm -hmm. doing the morally right thing. But she's also giving him no leeway. Like, she's cornering him into... Mm -hmm. If, if she makes it off, off the planet, then he's going to go to jail and he's going to have his life ruined. His life is ruined. He gets no financial payday. She's, he's going to jail, reputation ruined, fire from the company. Life over for Burke. So if so, he's a cool-headed, calculating person, which he's demonstrated mm-hmm. himself to be, mm-hmm. what calculation can he have? He, he has to kill her. Yep. As the only option. She's, she's backed him into a corner. So the only option at this point is to kill her. Um. I f- it feels like the right thing to do to to threaten him based off of moral reasons, but actually she's undercutting herself. Right. And so she doesn't see that the only option at this point is to he, kill, she, to kill, kill her. Yep. Now, she even so she falls asleep with Newt without looking for Burke, giving him the opportunity. So I don't know why Ripley expected Burke to not act on this when she's essentially threatening to end his life. Yep. So I think Ripley could have handled this better. Uh, well, it was a misstep in my opinion. So Burke sets the face hugger against um, Ripley and Newt. And this is, she, Ripley uses the fire alarm to get out of it, which Burke didn't see coming. I mean, mm. okay. Yeah, so, super smart to have a lighter on you. We should bring smoking back. That's right. Burke failed. Let's watch. I say we grease this rat son of a right now. Listen to what you're saying. It's paranoid delusion. It's really sad. I don't know which species is worse. You don't see them fucking each other over for a goddamn percentage. So yeah, he's trying to cover his tracks. He's trying to gaslight people to, to protect himself. But in his defense, we don't see the aliens fuck each other over for a percentage. But we, we, we don't know what their economic systems are. Maybe they maybe they are fucking each over for for finances. I, I don't I, I I don't know. That's right. There's got to be some competition between the xenomorphs. It can't just be like this well-oiled cooperative machine. No way. I mean, they're. I mean, they would be like a like an ant colony if they were, but they're not ants. Mm-hmm. But do ant colonies fight other ant colonies? Sure. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Is that fucking each other over? Maybe. Yeah. For so, for resources. Sure. Yeah. Classic line. Xenomorphs are pretty smart. They do cut the power. We gotta go back. They cut the power. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're animals. I, want- I mean, they are animals. It's weird. They're so smart. It's right. Weird. They must have at least a similar level of intelligence as to velociraptors, mm-hmm. because those guys will will cut power to to, to human structures. Let's. Uh... Let's see this mistake. Khan's mistake from Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. 12 meters, 11, 10. Then they're right on us. 9 meters, 8 meters, 7, 6. B, that's inside the room. Well, you're not reading it right. It's reading right, man. Look. 5 meters, 4. No one believes him. <laughs> he, he reads it t- right twice. No one believes him. <laughs> Ooh, scary. <laughs> so Khan's mistake in The Wrath of Khan is he doesn't think... In three dimensions, he was thinking in two. So the xenomorphs are thinking in three dimensions. And um, Hudson's device is only a 2G projection. Oh, So this is a sensor problem. That's, that's a design flaw. Yeah. So that's that's humans expecting combat with humans. And so only thinking about humans being on the same floor as them. Mm-hmm. But actually, if you had enemies that could fly or could climb up in trees above you, you really want like a, a 3D hemisphere. I guess... Mm-hmm. Also underground, if you fight like gophers or something, mm-hmm. you want it like a whole sphere where these dots could be. Mm. Mm. So with sensor problems and they didn't think 3D. Classic mistake. Classic mistake. I had a temp job for a while. Every day, every day I saw that drop ceiling. I was like, mm, I could be aliens in there. Mm. Mm. I like here Hicks takes care of Ripley in a panic attack. Takes care of the emotions in the moment, but makes sure that they are moving on to the next thing so they can live to fight another day. No! Let's go! No! They don't kill you! He's alive! I believe you! She's alive! We've got to go! Now! 
So Hicks could have just said, we gotta go. But instead he says, I believe you, we gotta go. So he acknowledges the emotion, but then immediately is like, we gotta we got get out of here. We can't fix this problem right now. Mm -hmm. And Ripley, because of that acknowledgement of the emotion, is able to get back in the game. They don't kill you, he's alive! I believe you, she's alive! We've gotta go, now! She's so, freaking out, she's mm -hmm. panicking, but then I believe you, she feels hurt, she makes eye contact, then she's able to con connect with him and see that, ah, he's trying to get us out of here. Yep. Excellent. They later find uh, Newt inside the hive. Gross. Peels back like f Oh, scary. Grab onto me. Hold on. Oof, freaky. Hmm. So, so super cool, super cool that they're like running through the the terraforming installation, and then they just happen upon all these eggs. They're suddenly in the hive. Um, I had a follow up thought about this. Is like we only see aliens form these hives inside the engineer ship, and then now inside the the terraforming base. Um, do we have to worry about xenomorphs setting up shop in like a cave outside? Like, 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 why here? Yeah, it's it's. It seems like maybe they're attracted to enclosed spaces that are warm. Okay. Okay. So maybe warm caves, maybe near ships reactors, but maybe they can set up nests all over the place. Who knows? Hmm. So, mm. does seem they like heat though, heat and moisture. I see. Maybe something about it helps their gestation in these eggs because mm -hmm. like you're just getting energy coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. If you have a if you have a low temperature, then it could like slow down something. They, but they also seem to like build this like I don't know what you would call it. They like structure -y stuff around it. Biomatter all around the place. Maybe that's mm -hmm. some kind of environmental control for them where if it's oh. not hot and not humid, they'll grow this stuff and it makes it hot and humid in the enclosure. Very cool. I buy, I buy it, I believe. Yeah. There's some questions about how adaptable their nests are yeah. here. Maybe they just prefer to take over structures because it's easier to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. A few seconds later, we get we get the full-blown, we're in the hive with the queen. Let's watch. Ugh. Really is right there, and the queen watched her walk in the room, just mm -hmm. absolutely silent. Yeah. So my thought about this was, why have that external egg sac? Mm -hmm. And not only is there an external egg sac, but in a moment of, of emergency, the queen is able to remove the egg, egg sac. Mm -hmm. Can we go so, a little bit? A little so bit? Here's the here's the egg sac. Is an external. Right. Is, yeah. So as far as I know. Every animal has an internal egg sac. That's like if they're gonna, as a, instead of like, how do I say this? They either internally make the eggs or they full on like make an egg sac and leave it somewhere and then walk away. So this is a strange scenario where it's like an external egg sac, but also still connected to the right. the, the hive queen. And so my first question is, why have an external egg sac instead of just internal? So I mean I think there's a disconnection mechanism which we're seeing this is this is the queen's body. main body here yeah. and this is the external egg sac. Right. She's starting to disconnect from the sac. Mm -hmm. This must be an important mechanism for them. So you mean, can grow the external egg sac and then disconnect if needed. Ah, so okay, okay, okay. So so first thing is why an external egg sac is because they have exoskeletons. Mm -hmm. So for them to have an internal egg sac then they would either be gigantic and unwieldy, or they would have to have the ex the exoskeleton like separate plates, and now you have vulnerabilities. So if you can, if you have a safe enough environment, then you can build an external egg sac and make all your eggs. However, if you get attacked and there's some type of emergency, it's more important for the queen to escape than it is for this set of eggs to be made. So then they can ditch the egg sac and bail. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is a queen could abandon a particular thing, particular area, and go start again somewhere else, mm -hmm. and you know make new workers and make new eggs and make new egg sacs and everything. 
So maybe it's an interesting defense mechanism that's evolved for this yeah, species. Very cool. Yeah. Classic line. Let's watch. Get away from her, you. I had so many fantasies about this machine as a kid. Like yeah. I, I wanted to be this for Halloween. Like I wanted to, like walk around these robot guys. Super cool. Super cool. Yeah, very adaptable, and you know, it could be extremely useful if we make one of these in the future. There are like kind of like these right now, hmm. and so towards the end of the film, the the hive queen gets ejected into space. My question is, we know very little about these xenomorphs. Do we know that being thrown into space is a death sentence for it? I guess we don't, because it has an exoskeleton. Maybe the exoskeleton can handle negative pressure. That's right. So the exoskeleton can protect the creature from being attacked from the outside, but also protect it from expanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe at this point, it's kind of a death sentence because there's no planet in, in range. Right. But it may, she may not die right away. Uh, yeah. We don't actually know. She could find an asteroid or, or a moon or I mean, depending, maybe it can even survive a reentry. Just That'd turn turn its turn its head shield thing up to the mm -hmm. to the atmosphere, maybe. Maybe. The positioning of this uh, airlock device really bothered me. Look at look how far she has to reach from the ladder to get there oh you're saying why not have it closer to the ladder well, yeah i have it closer to the ladder in fact even just behind one of the rings sure also this control panel is able to open both doors which is odd you think there'd be that's some right. safety mechanism right. that at least one has to be closed at all times that's right because it's, it's an airlock right. so if you're out in space exactly what happens here you don't want somebody pulling that lever and then the whole ship has to get right. sucked out you think she'd Ripley would have to climb up the ladder, close the top one, and then open the bottom one? Yeah, with the exception of like if they're in atmosphere, then you can turn off those controls or something, right? So I guess if this entire place was evacuated, then the safeties would allow you to open both. Yeah, but it's weird that she's able to do that and vent the entire ship. That's dangerous. Super dangerous. Uh, yeah, there should be some sensors for like we're we're rapidly losing pressure. Shut all inner walls. Right. Hmm. Very weird. I guess like on a on like a water ship now, if they get a hull breach, just like shut the internal shut, doors. Shut the internal doors, yeah. There's some growth. Ripley and Newt are now have a parental relationship and Ripley doesn't hate androids anymore. Mommy. Mommy. Oh God. Oh. Not bad for a human. Bishop's so cool. Yeah. I, I wish he didn't die. Yeah. He did he did good. He did good. And that's it. That's Aliens. Mm -hmm. So now, what's going to happen in the next uh, movie? Of course, I already know, but Ripley can now return to society with Newt, which is, you know, Ripley lost her daughter because of old age. Of time. Yeah. yeah. So now she can raise Newt. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, do the Xenomorphs truly threaten humanity? Is that... Is that really going to be a problem in the future? I mean, even if they threaten humanity, or maybe they don't, I think the only good bug is a dead bug. Hmm. And uh, how smart are the xenomorphs? They cut the power, they were able to make tactical decisions. It was unclear. They went for the drop ship when no one was around, mm -hmm. and they seem to be able to communicate and coordinate attacks without saying anything. So maybe they have some type of telepathy that humans are unaware of. Right. Like, it could be very interesting. Or maybe the xenomorphs are, you know, we the... Whaling China gets a bunch of samples and they turn xenomorphs into soldiers That's for humanity. Cool. Yeah, sure. To attack like the even worse enemy out there somewhere else. Yeah. Let's find out. Let's find out next time. Alien 3. See you next time.